excited to be here today with this GMC van. It is actually a moving van. Uh, I am downsizing with my husband for uh, living more on the road. We're actually living in a small yurt on some friend's land now, and we are moving out of the house as we sell it. Uh, so downsizing for the mo nomad life. It's a great opportunity to test drive for transits. Some companies even have Ram Promaster moving vans, and today it is all about the GMC. A lot of the videos on van life only show the back end, uh, but you know the majority of the money that we're spending is on that, what's under the hood. And that is going to influence how it feels as far as acceleration, maneuverability, braking. Uh, so those are the kinds of things I'm going to talk about as well as the back end because some of you might be considering a box truck style for van life. All right, this is the, the, the GMC Savannah 2021. It, it feels uh, lower than the Ram Promaster. Uh, I, I'm not gonna have to climb as high. This is a nice uh, handle here to grab. Very, very, um, Decent sized foot well here. Easy to slide into. There's plenty of room to slide in. Let's see what that's like coming down. Very good. Even without the hand rest, it's just fine. This is more comfortable for getting out rather than using this. This kind of is a little tight here. This feels good. You know, this, this is not too tall. This is, I gotta say, I think this and the Ford Transit are a tie. Hmm, I didn't see that coming. <laughs> the footwell area has something interesting going on. It's really comfortable for my knees. They just have all this wiggle room. Everything's very comfortable here. My right leg is, is comfortable, but then the left foot, the wheel well bumps up into the foot well area here and forces the left foot and, and knee to stay at this angle pretty much. You really can't go up because the emergency brake is here. It's not one of those pull emergency brakes. So it's taking up the room where your leg could otherwise be stretching out a little bit. So that is something to make note of. If I were to put the foot in the middle, then it's right under the brake, that's no good. I could put, you could put your foot like this. You can see I can sort of rest it like that. I can actually, there's plenty of room to get your knee off to the side, which is fine. You know, I can definitely, but this is a, a very real consideration. Um, so just, I would offer that up to you, uh, depending on your style of driving, especially for longer distances. Considering the passenger's comfort as well, especially for longer distances, the foot, the foot well of the passenger seat is right over the wheel well in this style van, which forces your feet into this narrow area if you want to be able to stretch both out. So I'm 5'6". Both my feet are stretched out. It feels kind of nice to be able to rest my foot against here from the side, which is great. But if I just wanted to sit up straight and, rest and stretch out my feet, it, it bumps into this. Um, that may or may not be a consideration for your passenger, but I, I would definitely take that into consideration about how important that's going to be. The steering wheel is a very comfortable angle. It's a car style angle. It is a shifter that is behind the wheel, uh, and, which is different than the ones that are in the middle. Um, kind of takes me back to the, the 80s. I feel like I'm traveling through time a little bit, um, but that's just fine. It keeps it out of the way of the center console here, which actually is giving the center console more area to breathe. The seats are, these are the seats. They're nice and soft, kind of a pleather. And the dash is nice too. Um, look at that. The cup holders are really close up which is great. Uh, nice tray here. 
and a flat, easy to view, super easy to view console. It's easy to see the speedometer, odometer, and the other meters while driving. Also, the vents are really easy to maneuver from the driver's seat. There's this compartment here, compartment here. Uh, there's a 120 volt plug. That is super cool. There's USB and DC right there, easy to get to, and nothing's gonna spill on them. So uh, yeah, this is a, I like the, the cab. This is a, a nice layout for the cab. You can see here that the hand, my hand is squeezed between the seat and this, and this is a snug turn. And then right here, there's a, a lip, and that is where I'm catching on my finger, or then if I try it with my thumb, it's awkward. Um, so that, I don't really like that. Because my seat is forward, uh, that is a problem. Now, if the, my seat goes back, that's not a problem. That's totally fine. So that's something, that, but I can't reach the pedal then. <laughs> so that's something to keep in mind. The inside of the door has these three compartments. The driver's side and the passenger side both have them. Now, they're shaped, I believe, more for workers than for van lifers or just commuters. This seems well-sized and shaped for clipboard. This center mm, compartment, I don't know. You would, you would need an awfully tall water bottle to fit in there. Just to give you a sense of the the, the depth of these. Here, my arm is going in. My arm's going, it's still going in. It's still going in. Oh my God, it's almost to my elbow. Uh, so it'd be really hard to get items out of either of these if they had fallen to the bottom. It's pretty narrow in there. All right, I'm all belted in and there's a nice arm uh, rest here built into the door. There's also an arm rest here. It's at a good height, feels natural for my body. Now I am 5'6". Uh, and I weigh 150 pounds. So those of you who may be of different dimensions, you, you have to you know, figure it out for yourselves. I'm sh but I'm sure there's a wide range of comfort in here. Um, but for me, this, this fits like a glove. So far, so good. Let's see how it drives. Yeah, I'm, uh, this is, uh, you know, the window, what you can see out of the windows varies quite a bit. In, between the Ram Promaster and the Ford Transit. In this GMC Savannah, the 2021, it feels like the middle ground. So the, there is sky and there is plenty of road. Whereas I've got to say in the Ram Promaster, I felt pretty confined. I could not really see enough sky at all. In the Ford Transit, I felt like I was seeing an amazing, it was almost like being outside. I could see sky and road and it felt like there was almost nothing between us. In this, it feels more like the middle ground, which is just fine. The pickup was a little stiff. Uh, it's driving just fine. I definitely feel high up. Uh, the suspension, it, it's very smooth on these bumps. It kind of, I don't know how to describe it. It's um, very cushiony, uh, a little bit like floating across the bumps. There's nothing so far about the drive that would make me not want to get this. I'm gonna pick it up now. Good pickup. Mm, well, that's a lot of balance, isn't it? <laughs> All right, we're gonna take this bad boy down the scariest hill in Brattleboro, Vermont, called Union Hill. I don't enjoy this hill in any vehicle, but I, I do remember though that the Ford Transit gripped it really well. Uh, it has a nice low gear in that Ford Transit. <sighs> Let's, we're gonna see how the GMC Savannah 2021 does. Uh, and remember that there is this, you know, big honking cargo box attached to it. Um, all right, so uh, I think I'm gonna earn a big thumbs up uh, in a moment, just for bravery. Uh, there is no one here to film it while I do it. Uh, so I think what I'm gonna do is just lay this down and I'll talk, but you probably won't be able to see anything. Okay, um, so I'll be doing that very soon.
Okay, I'm going to downshift into first, into manual. Okay, going into third, and now I'm going into manual two. It's going 1400 RPM in manual two, and I'm going to take off my foot from the brake. Okay, we're going 2300 RPM. Wow, it's gripping it. It's gripping it. Okay, we're at manual one. It's still gripping. Okay, this is good. It's at 1900 RPM. My God, I don't know. Okay, I'm doing it. 2500 RPM. Okay, yay! All right, at the bottom. Wow, awesome! <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> I just pulled you all out from between the seats. <laughs> okay, that was cool. That worked. That worked just fine. Um, I don't know how, if I have the courage to do that with it a build inside of it. Um, I would, I'm sure I would be using my brakes uh, on the build, but it's really, really, really important, you know, to know if a, if a van or a vehicle, any vehicle that we are using all the time, especially with a build of any kind, or just a lot of our stuff, even if we're not building, can um, handle hills going up and down. Uh, and if our brakes are getting low, can engine braking protect us? So that is something that I, I test drive all the time. Also, engine braking is just really important for preserving brakes, not only in an emergency, but just decreasing the wear and tear. So that is a little pointer, something to do on your test drives is to find a hill and do that engine braking and see how low those gears can go and how much they'll hold. All right, so next task is to load her up with stuff from the house and um, I'm gonna be doing that and then getting over to the storage unit uh, and then I'll have more to tell you in a little bit. All right, now, now it is time to test the rear view camera. I'm backing up, I pulled over to the side of the road and I'm just gonna back up it's right on the left side of the rear view mirror. Uh, it feels good. It feels actually really, I'm not, I feel like my brain isn't having to think much. That's interesting to sort out what I'm seeing. Well, that's, oh, I wonder why that is. Um, so I like it. I like the backup camera. It's fine. It doesn't have any of those indicators that other backup cameras have that tell you how close you're getting to objects. That would probably be a good thing. Um, but well, there's something about it that feels kind of natural. Let's see how it does backing into the driveway. So far so good. This backup thing is going well. It's, um, this is actually, why is this easier in this truck? I don't know why this is easier. It's easier than it was in the Ford Transit. I really like the rear view camera. The air conditioner means business. It is intense. It's a very good air conditioner. Okay. Hey, so driving with a full load now. This this puppy is loaded, and it feels really stable, steady. I don't doesn't feel like I'm pulling a lot of weight. It's actually kind of fun to drive. It's pretty spongy. So on the the bumps, uh, they it feels like you're in one of those toddlers rocking harnesses uh, where they can walk around the room and sort of on bungee cords. It feels like that. It turns like a breeze, just super easy. This this baby is loaded and I'm hardly noticing. It went up the hills just fine. Uh, did the braking was just fine going down. I did not dare do Union Hill though. Sorry. Sorry. That's not happening in this test drive. Um, and the turning, now I'm going to turn kind of on the sharp turn here to get into the storage unit area. Um, let me see how it does. Seems to be doing fine. Yeah, it's good. Yep, thumbs up on turning, thumbs up on carrying a load, and thumbs up on the sponginess. Yeah, good, good stuff. All right. So this is the cargo truck 
parked in a standard parking space. You can see that there's a little bit of overhang. But I'll tell you, parking this felt almost like parking a car. Really natural. Here we are inside of the box connected to the GMC Savannah 2021. Now the box is an option. If you like a van and you don't like the back of it, you can have a box put on the back of it. You can just buy a cab, which is a pretty cool option. The box on the back of this GMC Savannah happens to be the same width of the cab. And so driving it, it felt a lot like driving a van. The height, as you can see in this particular box, is, I don't have a measuring tape on me. I'm 5'6", it's probably about six feet. Now, different brands of box companies, or different boxes are made by different companies, and um, so you can select the one that, that meets your needs. In this case, this one has a translucent roof, and it lets a lot of light in which I think is terrific. Uh, some folks with their van builds will add a side door to their box, right here or right here, anywhere they want, a side door or more than one, and windows if they choose. Of course, a fan is a good option. Now, all of that said, in the case of the GMC Savannah, which we're test driving, I wanted to get a sense of the height from the ground to see how it felt getting in and out because that may also be the option the route you take if your build is side to side if it's galley style you may not be getting in from a door on the sides you may be getting in from the back so i felt that it was very natural again i'm five six very natural to step in and out also of course you could have a pass through here into the cab of your uh, van so this is the GMC Savannah box truck. It's, it's uh, through budget rental right now. And if you're interested, I would recommend taking it for a test drive. Who knows? The Ram Promaster with its squarish sides and the Ford Transit with its, its square sides down here and then slight curve on the top are great vans. But who knows? This perfectly square box truck may actually be the option you're looking for. All right, this is the wrap up. How did the GMC Savannah 2021 do? Overall, I give it a thumbs up for drivability. The braking was excellent. I was able to get up and down the steep hills just fine. The engine braking was solid in first gear, although I did not have the courage to try it fully loaded like that. Um, the uh, turn, turn radius was was totally fine I made some sharp turns forward and backward and it did great the cooling oh my goodness the air conditioner in this top-notch another mm, combination thumbs up thumbs down so we'll do this in this trim level it's the manual wind window roller and the manual mirrors. Now on the one hand, that, that means that you don't have to worry about the electrical breaking down some time and those can be expensive fixes. But then on the other hand, the, it's cramped. If you are scooted up towards the steering wheel, then it's cramped for rolling down the window and it actually hurts. Like I, I this part of my thumb got sore rolling and rubbing up against the side of the door, rolling up and down the window. So that's all gonna depend on how far up you have your seat scooted. That is something to consider. The other thing to consider is that wheel well, uh, right in the foot area. It's right under your left foot, the wheel well, instead of under your seat, like in some other vehicles. And because of that, your left foot is cramped in. So I'm gonna give that a thumbs down. 
The manual mirrors, okay, they were excellent as far as backing up. I really liked them for backing up. It gave me a good sense of distance. But I gotta say, looking at the two types of mirrors right on top of each other was a little mm, disorienting. However, the windshield, great view. Great view of the sky and the, the road. Not quite as much sky as you might want, uh, as you would get in the Ford Transit. Something to think about is if you're gonna add swivel seats to this, which so many of us in van life do, a lot of swivel seats will actually raise your seat up. Now I would say that the sky, where you would stop seeing the sky in this GMC Savannah, um, might, you might actually be raised up enough in that swivel seat to stop seeing that part of the sky and that may shrink it too much for you, that view of the sky. So definitely I would say it's important to go with a low profile swivel seat if you're gonna do this GMC Savannah. It's worth, it's worth a shot. So overall I say this is worth a test drive and especially if you're gonna be able to sit a little further back than, than I do. And hey, let me know how it goes. And are any of you out there actually driving something other than a Ford Transit or a Ram Promaster? Are you driving a GMC Savannah? I would love to hear from you in the comments and how you have, if you've found solutions, or maybe you have the trim level that has those electric windows. Okay, so thank you so much for tuning in. Remember, we, you can do it. You don't need the ideal rig. You don't need the most expensive rig. You don't need the most popular rig. Just get out there on the road and you'll discover what you need. And you can always find a new rig. You can trade your vehicle in. It's quite remarkable how much people swap uh, their rigs out. So you can do it. Enjoy your journey. Mm -hmm.